Welcome back folks, Everyday South Texan. Here we are with our continuing saga of water heater trouble. So, I went ahead and got in contact with Heartland's warranty department and they were kind enough to send me a brand new board. So, today I'm gonna install the board. Let's see if that takes care of our problem here. Set you guys up. You can see what's going on. Give me a second here, let me all down. Okay. So everything is here behind the access panel. We're gonna open it up. And there's our existing board. So we're just gonna pop off the igniter. And we're gonna take off these quick connect clips. Actually. The other one. Need a small screwdriver just to pry the clip off and then you pull straight out. Easy peasy. Alright, <clears throat> and you just use the nut driver. Unscrew these small screws. So in the package they did send me new screws, but I'm just going to reuse these screws because they're self-tappers. Really not that big of a difference. Quick new ones, to old ones. <clears throat> so here we have the old board here, and which is identical to the new board. So we're going to install the new board, and hopefully we'll get that relay to close on the hot water heater. And then my electric side will be working. If not, something else is wrong. But I ran all the tests for troubleshooting. Heartland recommends, Atwood recommends. So this is the last. Okay, now I'm going to go and flip the electric side on and off and see if we can hear that clicking of the relay. Be right back, guys. Okay, folks, I don't know if y'all heard it on this end. But I flipped the switch for the electric element on and off a couple times, and I could hear it clicking. So I believe that was the hot water heater clicking on and off. What I'm also going to do is make sure my furnace wants to ignite also. So I'm going to turn on the, I mean, I'm sorry, the gas side just to double check, make sure this board is fine. So I'm going to go flip that on and off real fast and see what happens. Now right here, I know a lot of people are thinking, man, you don't want to run your propane without any water in there because you're going to burn your your uh, tank up. Well, I'm only going to run it for a second uh, just to make sure that the uh, igniter is working and that it will control the uh, valve for the fuel. And then I'm going to shut it off so I'm not risking any chance of burning up the tank and cracking the tank or anything like that. Everything seems to be working right. I've got one more test I want to run. 
on the inside I'm gonna open up that, that panel where the relay is and I'm gonna check test for continuity so let's go and do that right now all right guys <clears throat> I'm gonna flip the switch on and off see if we hear that click sure did right there that was the click for the relay Right here, we're going to test for continuity uh, on the switch side of the relay to make sure that it closed and we're getting good continuity And because and, I don't have 120 volt power where I am storing the travel trailer. So we want to make sure that it is flowing through, continuity is flowing through that switch and, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, folks, here's the, uh, the test here. I flipped the switch on. My relay has closed and I am getting continuity between the two sides of the contact, the normally open contact. So that means my power coming in is now flowing through the switch, through the hot wire onto one side of the element, which will heat the water heater. So there it is. We've gone through our troubleshooting. We figured out what it was, the relay burned up, which caused the board to short and needing both of those to be replaced. Uh, well, thank you guys for sticking around this long. This is Everyday South Texan. Hopefully this helps y'all out with uh, whatever problems y'all have. One of the first things you guys should buy as, a, uh, as an RV owner, travel trailer owner, is just to get you a cheap multimeter. Got this one on Amazon, and you all you really need to do is is be able to own things out, make sure circuits aren't broken. Uh, it, just doing that, you'll be able to to narrow down the problems that could be and figure out what's going on. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, you need a really expensive one. You just need one that's going to figure out on that's going to be able to let you own, open things out." And Everything you know, you got to remember things in, in travel trailer 120 or uh, or 12 volts, you know, so 12 volts DC. So you don't need a super expensive meter, they're easy to check. You check them at the house, see if you can, you know, pick up your, your lamp, your normal plug, test your batteries at home, and then you'll know, okay, hey, this thing's working, and that's you know, easy, easy, easy to figure out. You don't need a $120 multimeter. But that's my uh, recommendation. Just get you one. And uh, you'll be able to figure things out on your own. And save yourself some time and money. Uh, you know, RV uh, repair places are backed up, you know, for months. And, and who wants to leave their travel trailer, you know, someplace for a couple of months and be out of being able to use it and not knowing, hey, did they really fix it or whatever. If you've got a little mechanical knowledge, you'll be able to figure things out. So... All right, folks, thanks again for watching Everyday South Texan. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. Later.